Good evening and welcome to another online edition of OU Nightly. I'm Cal Day. Tonight joining you from my hometown of Owasso, Oklahoma. Of course, we're still prevented from entering our studios in Norman, but we are dedicated to bringing you this newscast on an online platform. So let's get to it. Our top story tonight, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders endorsing Joe Biden. This comes just five days after Sanders suspended his own presidential campaign. Sanders and Biden say they agree to work on policy matters together. They plan to form six task forces targeting the economy, education, criminal justice, immigration, climate change, and health care. Biden is the likely Democratic nominee for November's general election. And nearly 25 million people on the East Coast are keeping an eye on a storm system that has already caused deadly tornadoes across the South. Deadly storms took the lives of at least 32 people in six states on Easter Sunday. Right now, there are close to 850,000 people in the areas impacted. And all the National Weather Service will survey 40 reports of tornadoes. And at least two dozen people have been killed and hundreds of homes and buildings have been destroyed. It appears Mississippi is one of the hardest hit areas with 11 people killed in that state alone. Now, coming up, our weather team will take a deeper look at those storms and the impacts that they had. And our other top story tonight, COVID-19 continuing to bring turmoil to a local nursing home. The number of coronavirus-related deaths at Grace Skilled Nursing and Therapy in Norman is now up to 10. This is the highest number of confirmed cases at a nursing home in the state. The rise in deaths comes after the facility attempted to slow the spread by closing business to visitors and halting family visitations. In Oklahoma, there are 25 coronavirus-related deaths reported from nursing homes. And across the state, the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise. The Oklahoma State Department of Health reports over 2,000 cases in Oklahoma. There have been 275 new cases just over this weekend alone. There are also more than 450 hospitalizations and nearly 100 deaths. And OU Medicine is working to curb the spread with the help of the Norman community. The Million Mask Challenge is an initiative where manufacturers and individuals who can sew can donate personal protective equipment. The president and CEO of OU Medicine says he hopes they don't need a million masks, but it is important to be prepared just in case. And across the Red River into Texas, there are 13,906 cases reported. The Lone Star State also reports 287 deaths. In the nation, the CDC reports nearly 555,000 cases of COVID-19 and almost 22,000 deaths. And also happening nationwide, many students are not happy with classes shifting to an online platform, especially when they are paying tuition for in-classroom learning. Two class action lawsuits have been filed against Drexel University and the University of Miami, Often, online classes cost significantly less for students, especially those attending college in a different state. Students at the two universities claim that they're paying for services no longer being provided to them. Many students and professors argue online classes are less effective and less valuable. I'm Hannah Gard, coming to you from Colorado Springs, Colorado. We saw a very active severe weather weekend over the holiday weekend, starting Sunday, overnight Sunday night, and into today as well as those storms continue to make their way up the East Coast. You can see on our local storm reports map here, completely covering the southeastern part of the United States and moving up the East Coast there. We have damaging wind reports, large hail, as well as tornado reports where those red dots are located. Now these tornadoes started in Louisiana and they dropped some very damaging and deadly tornadoes. As you can see in these images in the Monroe Airport, planes just completely destroyed, metal twisted around and roofs ripped off of houses. This moved into Mississippi and we started to see twin tornadoes developing one after another. Those were very long track tornadoes sitting on the ground for over an hour. I think as we start to see those storm reports coming in, we'll see very strong wind on those tornadoes. This image here is one of those Mississippi tornadoes. 
and the damage from these. You can just see those cars tossed around, houses ripped from their foundations, that sign on the side of the road completely destroyed, and large trees ripped out of the ground, their roots exposed or snapped completely in half. As the storms continued eastward, they moved into the Carolinas. This image here coming from North Carolina, that house just completely destroyed. Now we hate to see weather events like this, especially on a holiday weekend, and that death toll continues to rise. I think it's sitting in the 40s right now. We'll start to see that go up as we go throughout the day today, and those storms continue to move their way up the east coast. In Oklahoma, we saw the tail end of those storms yesterday, but it's completely moved through now. Our temperature is sitting 30 degrees cooler than this time yesterday in Norman. And we saw some rainfall throughout the state over the past 24 hours, most of it in the eastern part of the state, about a half inch to an inch of rainfall. But we'll start to see more rain overnight tonight. In central Oklahoma, mostly rain, could see some snow mixed in there as we go throughout the night. But the snow is mainly going to be isolated to the western part of the state and the panhandle where that winter weather advisory is in effect. Our lows tonight sitting in the 30s across the board, giving us those conditions to see some snowfall as it starts to get cool enough. And waking up tomorrow, it's going to feel very chilly. So if you put your hats away, time to get them back out. We're going to be in the mid-30s. We'll warm up into the mid-40s and clear up as we go throughout the day. Our highs across the state, same story. We're in the high 40s and low 50s for about everybody. Our regional forecast there shows that rain coming in around the late hours of this evening in central Oklahoma. That snowfall mainly staying to the west of us, but this will continue throughout the night before clearing up completely by around midday tomorrow. So we'll be pretty dry after that. Our seven day forecast showing we're staying cool until Wednesday, warming up a bit Thursday before we cool off Friday, see another chance for rainfall, and we'll really start to climb up in our temperatures this weekend. Could see 70s on Sunday. Happy Monday, everybody. I'm Sophia Olivas coming to you from my home in Rowlett, Texas. I hope all of you are staying healthy and safe. And now let's dive into the world of sports. Last night, a former NFL quarterback, Tavares Jackson, died in a car accident in Alabama. The Minnesota Vikings released a statement on Twitter saying, Our entire Vikings family is saddened by the news of Tavares Jackson being taken from us too soon. He genuinely cared about others, was a good friend, and will be missed by family teammates, and Vikings fans everywhere. The effects of COVID-19 have hit the XFL pretty hard. The league has laid off nearly all employees, including executives, and has no plans on returning for the 2021 season. The XFL owners say they are evaluating the next steps and how they will plan to proceed. Now from the NFL to MD, one former Titans player is taking the title of safety to a whole new level. Myron Roll was drafted by the Tennessee Titans in 2010, but by 2013, he traded in his jersey for scrubs. He is now a neurosurgeon resident in Boston, helping patients fighting the coronavirus and says the thought of sports resuming in two months is a bit ambitious. I think we all need to be mm -hmm. comfortable just being a little bit uncomfortable, be patient mm -hmm. and allow this curve to continue to flatten and allow these brilliant intellectual people on the front lines the opportunity to figure this all out. And now time to wrap up with Sports Me Monday. Today we poke fun at our favorite Browns QB who's looking just a little bit like we're feeling. The caption reads March versus April and I can tell you I definitely relate. Now that's all I have for you from this side of the Red River. We hope to see you right back here tomorrow. Stay safe out there. Finally tonight, finding a way to say thank you. That's the task many are trying to accomplish for those on the front lines fighting against COVID-19. Now, typically this time of year, football teams across the country are gearing up for spring practice, but not this year. Instead, the OU football staff traded in drawing plays for drawing up signs to thank healthcare workers. Coaches and their families hopped in their cars and launched a parade with signs of gratitude and hope ultimately letting healthcare workers know they are standing with them. And that is something certainly positive to see. And that's going to do it for today's online edition of OU Nightly, brought to you by students working in several cities across the country. I'm Cal Day, reporting in my hometown of Owasso, Oklahoma. Good night.